Hey, what's going on, everyone? Welcome. This is Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. And in today's episode, Andrew and I are going to address the question, is there such a thing as a fair fight? I'm sure you already have thoughts, but hang tight. We will get there. If you're new to the show, I'm Jeremy Lesniak. I founded Whistlekick because I love traditional martial arts. And I'm joined by frequent co-host and all-around great guy, Andrew Adams. How are you, Andrew? I'm great. How are you doing, Jeremy? Good, thank you. And on Martial Arts Radio, we talk about all things traditional martial arts because it's what we do, it's what we love, and it is what we are here in support of. If you want to see all the things that we do, go to whistlekick.com. It's our online home. It's our store. And if you use the code PODCAST15, it's going to get you 15% off anything, like a shirt or a hat or I don't know what else we got. We got all kinds of stuff over there. There's flip-flops. Uh, you just ordered a pair of flip-flops. I saw that order come through. Or perhaps some of the sparring gear currently sitting in box pallet in my driveway right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm super excited about, well, I am super excited that there's more gear here. I am not super excited about the way it was left very clandestinely. Anyway, <laughs> moving on. <laughs> in the middle of us recording a live episode, by the way, people. Um if you want to go deeper on this or other episodes of the show, you can go to whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. While you're over there, you can sign up for the newsletter. You could leave us a tip. But there are lots of ways you can help us out, the ways I mentioned. But we've also got a Patreon, patreon.com slash whistlekick. As little as $2 a month gets you bonus content. Goes up from there with lots of different tier options. And if you want the whole list, if you are, in fact, truly a uh, someone who values what we do, go to the family page. If you are part of the Whistlekick family, go to whistlekick.com slash family and read about all the things that you could do. Excuse me, Andrew. Yes. Fights. Yes. We, we've we often heard the words fair and fight used together. That's not a fair fight. That's an unfair fight. He's yeah. not fighting fair. They're not fighting fair. That's an unfair fight. What do you think? Where do, where does this idea that fighting should be fair come from, even? Uh, I don't know definitively. I'm guessing it has something to do with Victorian era, where dueling mm. became mm. A thing. And that, you know, if we were going to duel each other, it would be, uh, you know, we have to have this, we have to have matched weapons, because it would be unfair if you had a sword and I had a pistol, for example. Mm. So instead, we both have pistols, or we both have swords, or whatever. Sure. I'm not sure that's the case. That's my guess, that it comes from that type it, of era. It, it wouldn't surprise me. And I think whether it was Victorian era or, or something else, I think there's an inherent recognition that if we are going to settle things through violence, right, a fight being a violent event, that it should be as fair as it can be. Right. Um, when we think about the notion of of um, settling a dispute via champions, right? Like this is something that's happened over time. And actually, we've talked about this on the show tribally. Like you know, each tribe picks a champion to fight. Yeah. The whole reason that that they do that is to try and settle this thing that has escalated to the point of violence, but in as fair a way as possible. I and mean, I'm using air quotes because we're saying, all right, it's one-on-one. -on -one. It's yep. not groups. It's not any of this. We're, we're trying to, to make this as fair as possible. And part of the fairness comes down to not having a whole bunch of people hurt or killed unnecessarily, right? So there's a, a utilitarian yep. perspective here. Because I think inherently we all want things to be fair. We generally root is uh, societally. We most of us like an underdog. If we're watching a sport, sporting match of any sport, and it's unbalanced, people either tend to tune out mm -hmm. or root for the underdog because we want there to be a semblance of fairness. We mm -hmm. want things to happen evenly. We. I, I hear this all the time in professional sports. You know, when you get a team that's loaded up with stars and they play another team, it's not really fair. You know, yeah. and this is where things like the salary cap come in, et cetera. 
Well, and when you're watching a, if we take the analogy again of as a sporting event, if it's very unbalanced as a viewer, it becomes and oftentimes it becomes boring. It's not fun yeah. to watch. So I think that's one of the reasons why the underdog is often rooted for. Yeah. Anybody who's been to a live sports event and it was unbalanced, you see people maybe two thirds, three quarters of the way, even halfway through leave. They're like, you know what? I know the outcome. It's not fun anymore. Exactly. I might as well beat traffic. Yep. I'm not going to yeah. sit around and sit in traffic so I can watch my team get stomped on. Yep. <clears throat> so that being such a fundamental, you know, inherent element of our humanity, it's only natural we're going to bring that forward to a fight. That we want to see that if two people are going to settle their dispute with violence. And yeah, I understand that sometimes disputes are initiated one-sided. I'm not suggesting that this is trial by combat or anything. Yeah. It's not always consensual. Right. But if it's going to go there, we're going to generally want people to follow the rules. And we all have slightly different versions of the rules, but I'm sure we can come up with plenty of examples. Uh, I'm thinking of a fight that happened in high school that was much discussed. It was two people who were friends. Mm -hmm. And somehow they decided that they were in an argument about who would win in a fight. And it escalated to the point where the fight ended up in the sand pit off campus. <laughs> and one of them kicked the other in the groin as their opening move and ended the fight. Yep. And there was much discussion about whether or not that was fair, because on the one hand, no one had determined that is off limits. Mm -hmm. But others said it is generally understood that men don't kick other men in the groin as part of a uh, um, an orchestrated fight. A consensual fight. A consensual fight, right? So it's there and it threads itself through everything. But you hit... Uh, I, I think a really important point when you use the word consensual, because that's where things become completely different. Yeah. Yeah. And, and even when you do get into the consensual fight, like, you know, the, the story you just mentioned of these two kids that went off and fought one ended this, the fight by kicking the other one in the groin. The other one could have done that. Yep. He had every opportunity to chose not to. Right. Even still, was that a fair fight? I don't know these two people. Were they exactly the same weight? Nope. Did they have exactly the same training and background experiences? Nope. So I don't know who would have been the I don't know which one was the winner, but who can how can we determine it was a fair fight, even if they said let's not kick each other in the groin? Right. And the I I think that's a great point that the idea of fairness within the context of combat is so incredibly subjective. The only thing that determines fairness is equity in the rules. And I, this, is, this is where I think MMA becomes really interesting as an illustration, because you're in the same space, there's a referee that says go, and it's all about you, your training, your preparation, and the only points in time that I really see people get upset about outcomes comes from a perception of the referee applying rules in a way that they believe to be unfair. Mm -hmm. Yep. And I would make the argument <clears throat> that MMA having weight categories and having a predetermined set of rules of things that are and are not allowed helps to get them fair. But I don't personally think there's ever such a thing as a fair fight <clears throat> let's say jeremy you and i are the same weight mm -hmm. we decide to get involved in mma and we're going to step into the ring we're in the same weight class we're in the same category one of us has been training longer mm -hmm. and i'm not even saying i'm not even say who like but like doesn't matter in, in general someone has been training longer, someone has been training harder, someone has more experience than the other person, there's no way it can be fair. Right. 
You know, there, there are just too many variables. We can try to eliminate as many as possible, but the reality is someone is going to have more training and have a better chance of winning. I'm, you know, five foot 10, 260 pounds. I'm at a bar and a six foot four guy, you know, 300 pounds picks a fight with me and I am unable to extricate myself from the situation, which would be my first goal. But if I can, and I have to defend myself, he has no training whatsoever. He's just a really tall guy that, that is big. Mm. Is that a fair fight? He's bigger than me. So is he going to win? I have lots of training. He has no training. How can you determine it's a fair fight? It's all totally different. Right. Right. And and this is where I think a lot of people, because, you know, we've talked about this on the show, this idea that people need to remain the hero in their own story. People. So somebody like me, my instinct as someone who is five, seven and one sixty five, I look at that example that you give and I inherently want to discount the advantage that that taller, larger person has over you. And I want to hone in on experience because I have experience, I have lots of experience. And I want to apply greater value to that in that situation because I want to believe that if I'm in a situation that is similar, that I have a better chance of of winning than the person picking the fight with me. Yeah. And thus, I think what it really comes down to, this notion of fairness is us attempting to apply subjectivity to the situation in a way that makes us feel confident about the outcome. One of the things we've seen kicked around on social media over the last year, really, is this idea that fighting is the only thing that people with no experience think they have a good chance at. Yeah, very true. Yep. People who have never been in a fight in their lives will say, yeah, but if push came to shove, you know, I, I, I could do this. Nobody says that about stepping into the NBA or driving formula one or building or, a house or building a house or well it depends on where you are in the building a house thing. <laughs> I, I know plenty of people who think they can build a house uh painting right like we understand these are things that require skill and experience but because fighting is so primal mm-hmm. because it is not that far off for, for us to feel a connection to it when we observe it or how to implement it ourselves. Pardon me, I've got it. We believe that we have a, a more direct connection to implementing it in a skilled way than we really do. Yeah, yeah, I would agree. And you know, you brought up something that when, when I brought up this topic as an episode, uh, I was coming at it more from the MMA side of things, like mm-hmm. you know, weight classes. They try and make it fair, but the reality is, someone steps in there with fifteen fights under their belt. Even though they're in the same weight class, they're fighting someone who has two fights under their belt. There's a lot of experience. Is that a fair fight? But you brought up something that I hadn't even thought of, which is uh, society's expectation of fair fight. Uh, of you know, the classic example is not kicking a guy in the in the groin. You know, if if I am in an altercation and I have to defend myself, there there's no rules. Like nothing right. is off limits for me as far right. as I'm concerned. Even though society says I should not kick a guy in the groin, you can darn well bet I'm gonna. If I have, if that if that is the thing that is most likely uh, going to let me get home safely, you better believe it. Absolutely, yeah. And so that's a good lead in that subject, and and to, I think the reality, and I think it's how we both feel. You do what you have to do to go home that there is no fairness in a fight. I can say with almost certainty, I'm not going to be the quote, bad guy in a fight. I'm not gonna be the one picking the fight. I'm not gonna be the one mugging someone. Um, I'm, I'm not an instigator, that's not my nature. So I'll say with all but 100% certainty that I will be the quote, good guy in the fight. Mm-hmm which means I feel absolutely no compulsion to use any sort of rule set that the person attacking me, bystanders or society may want to place at my feet. I will bite, I will kick, I will scratch, I will pull ears, I will 
throw rocks at groins. I do not care what needs to be done. And I am the first to admit, no, there will be no fairness in what I will do. Because to me, the moment a fight occurs, and I think this is a, this is, we, we use the word fight in very different ways, right? We can ascribe fighting to point sparring. People call them fighters. Yep. They are fighting in a certain way. We can talk about it in terms of MMA. Those folks are fighting. But I think when you get really down to the definition of what a fight is, it is something that is not existing within a rule set. Yeah. And if we are going to talk about fighting in that way, if somebody is going to initiate a fight against me, I'm going to end it as quickly, definitively as possible. And that could mean running away because yep. if I'm not there, they can't fight with me, right? I, and there are people who would say, well, that's not fair. You ran away. You're right. That is not fair. I have yeah. zero interest in fairness. Absolutely. If someone picks a fight with me and I have a baseball bat that they do not see, I will hit them with the bat. Mm-hmm. If someone... um comes up to me while I'm in my car and they are trying to fight with me through my car and I have the option to run over their foot and drive away, I will do that because I have zero interest in fairness. Yeah. And anything you need to do to extricate yourself from, from the situation. Um, you know, my friend Angela and I taught a self-protection seminar to the, uh, to a young professionals group in the area. Mm. And, you know, we had a discussion about what, what is fair and what isn't fair in terms of how much, uh, you know, aggression or force you would use. And, you know, I don't want to relive, we we've done episodes on, on, you know, the yeah. appropriate use of force and stuff, but you know, one of the things that Angela brought up is she is an older woman with bad knees that and a bad back that will not be able to run away. So she is going to absolutely do anything she can, even if someone thinks it's unfair to put the person down because she will not be able to run away. Whereas for me, I don't have that that limitation that she has. And so, you know, I still err on the side of I'm not worried about fairness whatsoever. But, you know, those sorts of things can come into it as well. Yeah. For sure. Is there more for us to say on this? I don't think so. I think there's just, you know, again, with the MMA thing. Someone's going to be faster than the other. You know, if we're getting into a sparring, not even MMA, we're sparring, same weight class. One of us is going to be faster than the other. Yep. That gives them an advantage. It's not fair. And I think that in the case of something being uh, arranged in that way, the entire purpose of the rule set is it is to to determine who is better, who is who has the advantage who it, in the unfairness that, as you're saying, is inevitable. I think that that is that's the whole purpose. Um, you know, I, in in sports examples, I often go back to the Michael Jordan era. You know, the Bulls dynasty when they won the title three times, because there were plenty of times people would look at who they were playing and say, "This just isn't fair. Hmm. It's not meant to be fair." They've played the game. Yeah. Yep. The team has collected these players in this certain way, and they've done these things. It's not fair. If if we look at business, it is often not fair. Lots of things in the world are not fair. And while we all want fairness, I think in the context of things where there is a clearly defined rule set, I'm talking sports, I'm not necessarily talking business, mm-hmm. the outcome is not necessarily going to look fair, even if the conditions are. Yeah. When we look at violence, fairness is irrelevant. Yep. That's a great, great way to end it. I agree. All right. Now, if you're watching or listening and you have feedback on this, if you have a different take on it, if you want us to go deeper, because we open the doors on a few subjects here, this idea of of fairness and what in our, our, our inherent perception of what is and is not fair, et cetera, we would love to hear about it. You can email Andrew, Andrew at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. You can get to me directly, Jeremy at whistlekick.com. Our social media all over the place is at whistlekick. Our primary website, whistlekick.com. Are you getting the pattern here? It's all pretty simple. Whistlekickmartialartsradio.com is the place to go for this and all the episodes. We're on YouTube. We're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. We're on Instagram. Uh, You can find some of our stuff on TikTok even. 
if you're looking around, it's kind of hard to miss our stuff. And don't forget, we bake things. And that's really the way that we cover the expenses here. Uh, not just the gear that's sitting on my driveway. We've got <laughs> books on Amazon. We have events that you can attend, some for free, some for pay. You can contribute to our Patreon. And you can even buy one of our training programs or hire Whistlekick to coordinate social media or do some consulting work for you. It, there are lots of choices. And if you start at whistlekick.com, you're going to see all of it. Until next time, train, train hard, smile, smile and day. have a great day.